What is up everyone? It is me with ADHD. Hope you're all doing well. So I have been working from home recently and I decided that because of that, I was going to start taking on more responsibility of the upkeep of our house. I'm here, so why not, right? So I got up that morning and I was like, Laurel, I'm going to clean the entire house today. And as soon as she left, I just couldn't help but spend my entire morning procrastinating and then when I did get around to cleaning I got super sidetracked by the time she got home I could totally see the disappointment in her face when she said oh I just thought it was going to be clean by the time I got home and it was so disappointing of course but it got me thinking about living with people and their expectations of us and how ADHDers fit into the dynamic of a household. So what I want to do today is talk about the different types of roommates and how ADHDers can deal with them. I think this will be a good video for people who are headed to college for the first time or people who are about to move out from their parents' house or just anybody who has roommates. Now, first things first, ADHD to me is actually a category of roommate on its own. So what are ADHDers like to live with? Based on my own experience, because I mean, personality wise, we're all different, right? Even if you are ADHD, but typically we do have similar traits. So typically my room is what I like to call organized chaos. It's usually pretty messy to a normal person's eyes, but to me, I know where to find things. They're normally like on display to me so that I don't lose or forget about them. It's also because I just don't like to do small tasks. They just don't keep my attention long enough to do them regularly. Stuff like maintaining cleanliness is an example, uh, cleaning every dish after using them, uh, picking up the odd t-shirt, that kind of stuff. Like I like to handle things in big tasks. I'd rather just purge my entire room all at once when it comes to being messy. Then I just get stuck in and attack it head on. It's the same for around my house too. As an ADHDer, my hyperactivity thrives off social interactions as well. I love having friends over, so typically the house will have a lot of people in it. Or for me, again, the common rooms in a house will be a popular room in the house for me to be in. I remember one place I lived in with four people and I ended up actually putting my PC in the living room because I spent so much time in there. ADHDers don't tend to have a lot of money because their compulsion to spend it all as fast as they can make it is there. Also, part of being a social butterfly is going out and which you need money for. So there's a lot that went to that as well. I do tend to plan a lot of things on a whim with my roommates without realizing that I already have plans for that day or time. Uh, or I make plans on top of those plans because I forget about them too. So I would expect your ADHD roommates to flake on a lot of plans through poor planning. Lastly, emotional outbursts are a real thing for ADHDers. So people who are gonna have them as roommates should expect to be dealing with their emotions a lot as well. Now that's it for the ADHD roommate category, but what other roommates are there? Let's start with the clean freak. The clean freak is always cleaning up. They thrive off clean, organized environments. Their room is usually immaculate and they seem pretty well put together. Think of them as like an anti-ADHD. <laughs> they are a bit of a struggle for ADHD roommates because your lack of attention towards organization, like saying you're gonna do the dishes later on, will likely eat away at a clean freak until they either do them themselves, keep nagging and making remarks at you, or unfortunately, confront you about it. This person is also likely a little bit OCD. Okay, who's next? Oh, I know. The slob. This roommate is very messy, even for someone with ADHD. They rarely clean up after themselves, they will rarely help with the household chores, and they just don't do much of anything. Their rooms are usually an absolute bomb site, and 99% of the time, 
there's gonna be mold growing in there out of old food plates or leftover pizza from like months ago. This person can sometimes be mistaken for ADHD, which is actually unfair really because it's not typically the intention of an ADHD -er to like live in mess. And organized chaos is much different from unsanitary conditions, I can tell you that. ADHD is like to clean in bulk. The slob, however, doesn't clean at all. Next up, we have the party animal. Ah, oh, this is my college persona all over again. Good times. The party animal is exactly what the title says. They are social butterflies that love to party. They're likely going to be throwing a party at your house regularly or at least pre-gaming with their friends at your house. They typically have a lot of friends and can be a little bit exhausting for most roommates just because they don't respect that noise pollution is an actual thing and party until 5 a.m. isn't cool for your roommates that have work the next day. Sorry to all my college roommates. ADHDers are going to enjoy the impulsiveness of this, like the parties and stuff are going to be a lot of fun, but introverted ADDers will not. Next up is the ghost. That one roommate that moves in with you is usually super pleasant when you see them and talk to them, but as the weeks go by, you see a little bit less of them and less and less to the point where you're asking yourself, does that person even live here anymore? ADHDers can take it or leave it with this roommate. You might have a hard time with the fact that you can't socialize with them and it can get pretty lonely at times. But if you're an introvert, then this could be awesome for you guys. So congrats. Then we have the BFF. This person is also likely ADHD. Birds of a feather and all that, right? This person you will connect with immediately. They share your interests, they share a sense of humor, you spend all of your time together, it's a match made in heaven. Just as long as a girl or a boy doesn't come between you, of course. I know this from experience. For ADHDs, this is ideal. They'll likely understand your ADHD on a level that other people don't. And if they aren't ADHD themselves, they're usually pretty understanding and will actually help you keep on track. So this is a really great roommate to have. Okay, so I managed to save the worst for last, at least in my opinion, the passive aggressive one. This is an ADHDer's nightmare. Things are always tense around this person. They can never just tell you how it is. It's so frustrating. It's always these loaded conversations with snide remarks and sarcastic attitudes. ADHDers are by nature straight shooters. They like to tell you how it is because that's how their brain works. Just cut the crap and get down to brass tacks. This is why it's hardest to deal with passive aggressive. They take the opposite approach and all those ADHD symptoms of yours are likely to get right on that passive aggressive nerve. Even worse than that, they're probably likely to complain to your other roommates about you and try to turn them against you. This is a big no-no for ADHDers because it'll play on your rejection sensitive dysphoria really hard. The best way to handle this is to keep open communication at all times and confront everything head on. Do not let them hide from it because that'll only let things fester and then they'll have an opportunity to be passive aggressive with you and you really don't want that, trust me. Overall, I think having an ADHD roommate is like a little bit of a mixed bag, right? More than not though, it's gonna be a really fun experience. ADHDers are generally fun, funny, they're happy-go-lucky, they're impulsive, they're popular people. They'll keep you on your toes They'll help you whenever they can, even if their help is a little bit scatterbrained and all over the place. The intent is always there. They do have their drawbacks, but I mean, so does everyone. Every other trait in this list has its pros and cons too, so don't feel like yours are any different to anyone else's. I think having roommates is all about learning from different people and learning how to compromise and just learn how other people function and how you can get along with other people. I mean, it's a fun experience. It would be boring if everybody was exactly the same, you know? 
What experience do you guys have with roommates that you want to share with me? Have you dealt with a passive aggressive one? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and of course, please, before you go, so as I near 10,000 subscribers, thank you so much, by the way, everybody, it's amazing. I have decided that for my 10,000 subscriber, I'm going to do a live stream fundraiser for mental health charities. In the live stream, I'm going to be playing a few games, taking you on a tour of my Animal Crossing town, answering a bunch of questions and a lot more. So let me know if there's a charity that you think it would be good for me to donate to and I'll see if I can use that one. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you did. Don't forget to subscribe, stay up to date with all of my new content and I will see you guys in the next one.